Well, today I'm off to Margham Park. And it's not a nice day by any stretch of the imagination. I was having a little discussion this week with somebody about cycling technology. how people strive for the newest and latest, greatest thing. And I found that interesting really, because in the main, British people don't embrace technology. On a Facebook group the other day, somebody was asking what the best sat-nav system is. And of course, quite a few people said, get yourself a map. British people like manual gearboxes in their cars. And they don't trust things like cruise control or any of the other systems. My dad was one of those. We invited them over for Sunday lunch one time. They turned up about an hour late. And my mother got out the car, shaking her head. And she pointed at my dad. And she said, we left the lights on. So we had a flat battery. And they'd only just had a new car. And I looked at him and I said, how have you left the lights on? You've got automatic headlights. And he said, I don't trust them. Switched it off. Why don't you trust them? And he said, it's a silver car. And when the sky is gray, you won't be able to see it. So I switch the headlights on when I want to. I said, yeah, because these automotive engineers who've been to university for five years and got 20 years experience in their field, they never considered that a car might be silver. They're all sitting around with slide rules and pencils going, oh no, our system has been fooled because the car was silver. If only we'd asked Bob, he would have put us right. I'm the opposite. I love technology. My car's got automatic adaptive grooves. Connected sat nav. You name it. But when it comes to sport, there's what's known as the wannabe syndrome. And that's the people who want to look like they're really serious sportsmen because they don't think they'll be taken seriously otherwise. I mean, I'm talking about leisure sport. Obviously, when I was racing, I had all the gear because well, that's what I was doing. I didn't really even think about it, you know. You guys put together a bike, you got on it and you raced it. But when I played golf, there's always the people who have got the Callaway and the tailor-made clubs. Because you don't think anybody's going to take you seriously if you turn up with your bag of second-hand slazengers that you bought in a yard sale. And they'll always tell you how this new tech 
does this and does that. I remember Nick Faldo making a comment once saying if we were to believe the marketing people we'd all be hitting the ball 400 yards because every new club every new innovation is going to add 20 or 30 yards to your drive and he said if that was all added up we should be hitting about 400 yards now it's a similar thing with professional photography having spent many years as a professional photographer you go to an air show or a motor race and it's always quite amusing that the amateurs have got better equipment than the professionals because as professionals we know what we're doing We don't need to show off. And camera equipment's heavy. So you don't take more than you need. But in cycling, I have got a few gadgets, I will admit. But I started off being afraid of looking like I want to be. I'm doing this for leisure, not racing anymore. So I went out in shorts and a t-shirt and it only took two rides for me to remember why we wore padded shorts. So I got some of them. I wanted to track my progress so I got a computer I was also new to the area so I wanted one that was a sat nav as well and I have to say when I was racing I would have loved to have had one of them to know how far we were actually riding rather than a guess with somebody telling you yeah I know this route is 15 miles because my brother's friend went round here in his car hardly scientific it's also nice to know whether your average speed is increasing as a measure of your fitness and then I got a heart rate monitor and that was out of fear because I've known or known of several couch potatoes who start experiencing deteriorating health in their 50s and decide they need to take up some exercise so they push themselves too hard and some of them drop dead so I decided a heart rate monitor was a good thing to know how hard I'm pushing myself which I do have a tendency to do so I'm not opposed to technology in its place what you do find though quite often in the technology field is a lot of these things are just a solution looking for a problem there's no technology to make you a better hill climber and I also got a cadence sensor
because I was told that I would get better data from my computer in terms of calories used and so on. I will say I'm not without a gadget or two myself. But you see all that technology is monitoring me. And I've had things monitoring me for a long time. Hell, I've even got a watch. Tells me how long I should be washing my hands for. But it's the technology on the bike that I'm less sure of. Carbon wheels. DI2, electric gear shifting. All of these kind of things. I'm not so sure about them. Bloody hell, we love a one-way traffic light in Britain. I'm not saying all technology is bad. I think index gears are brilliant. Through axles. Those kind of things are really good. See, when I raced, all bikes were the same. You could walk around at the track looking at them. And they'd have different names and different colours but all the bikes or virtually all the bikes steel frame Reynolds 531 Chinelli bar and stem Campag hubs, Mavic rims and a tubular tyre glued onto it and it didn't matter even which tu brand of tubular tyre you used because there was nothing in it and for the road races the picture was very similar there was no such thing as a group set I ran a campag chain set Dura Ace Mex and all the frames and wheels were the same But when I started the race, it was me and my competitor against each other. There was nothing on the bike that would give either of us an advantage. Not just that, there's a purity to cycling. The bicycle is one of man's greatest inventions because with a few mechanical components, using the same power as you would for walking or running you can go so much further and so much faster and that's the purity I like a number of my colleagues have asked me if I'm going to get an e-bike and the answer is I'll get an e-bike if I need one. If I can cycle unassisted then I'll carry on doing it. But if I can't well I'd rather ride an e-bike than not ride at all.